Hello, and welcome to another of our series of the Life of Purpose videos where we're looking at the I Am statements of Jesus. I'm Bill Brunson. And I'm Kip McClure. And today we'll be talking about that moment in John 10, the 11th verse, where Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own, and my own know me. Now, Jesus was a master of using everyday things to illustrate his points, to drive home his, his message. And if you're in living in Israel in the time of the New Testament, if you're living in Israel now, you're going to understand something about shepherds and sheep. It's just, it's always been part of their life there. And so when Jesus talks about being a the good shepherd, well, people understand the difference between a good shepherd and a bad shepherd, and they understand the role of a shepherd. They understand the nature of how the shepherd tends to the sheep. They understand the difference between the shepherd and a hired hand. Yeah, there's a there's a couple of things uh, t- to catch as we're as we're looking through all these I am statements. Uh, one of them is, and we discussed it previously, but to reiterate, when Jesus uses the word I am, he's using the word Yahweh, mm-hmm. uh, which uh, you didn't speak. Uh, if you're a Jewish person, uh, you would make up all sort of other words that sort of fill in the blank, but you didn't really use the word I am. So every time Jesus says the word I am, he's creating a controversy. Uh, there's also this uh, ca- continued sort of interplay between Jesus being the new Moses and and Moses was a shepherd. Now that's uh he was out tending sheep when he found uh, found the burning bush and right. asked, you know, what's the name of this god and he mm-hmm. says I'm going to be who I'm going to be. And so um so we keep seeing John making that comparison uh with Moses. But there are shepherds who own sheep and who love sheep and adore, I mean they're, they they care for them. And then, you know, you've got the uh, minimum wage employee that comes in that takes care of the sheep that, well, they're just there for the money. Right. And there's a big difference between the two. Oh, absolutely. And it's the difference between a business owner and, uh, you know, the person that they've hired to, to run the drive through It's mm-hmm. it's a totally different mindset. And, and Jesus is trying to say, I am the good shepherd who truly cares for the sheep. And it does raise this question, well, who's the hired hands? Because, well, he's not saying very good things about them. And really, Jesus is speaking back to the religious leaders of his day mm-hmm. who had made the religion into um, really a money-making machine mm-hmm. and, and a means of, of, of carrying their own sense of self-worth and their own importance. And, and they weren't doing things to really shepherd Israel, to protect Israel, to lead it to, to greener pastures. They were just trying to keep their posts. Right, right. And, and so Jesus says there's a difference between the good shepherd and the hired hand. Because he says when something happens, when the wolf comes or the thief comes, well, the hired hand may easily look at that, that controversy, that issue, that problem, and simply say, yeah, that's not my job. Yeah. <laughs> and they just simply pack up and leave. But the shepherd, the good shepherd, these are his sheep. And as Jesus says, the good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. He will go to battle if need be with whatever uh, whatever has, is coming against his his flock in order to protect his flock from the outsider, from the intruder. Whether it be a thief or whether it's an animal, whatever it might be, he is going to stop that intrusion. He's going to protect his sheep. And that's a, that's a powerful image that Jesus is the good shepherd and he's going to protect us. But he's also willing to lay down his life for us. And we know that Jesus does that, literally does that. The outside force, the oppressor comes at us. And Jesus lays down his life 
so that we can have forgiveness and so that we can have, we can be atoned in our life so that we can have a relationship with God that leads to eternal life. And so he's the good shepherd that lays down his life for us, his sheep. There's another part of this right right before uh, these words where Jesus says, I, I am the sheep gate, which is kind of an odd sort mm-hmm. of phrase. But if you kind of look at how shepherds would care for sheep, I mean, Jesus was born, we would say, in a, you know, uh, in a, everybody thinks a barn, but it's really, it was a shepherd's yeah. cave. And they would look for these clefts in the rock. Uh, where you could build up some some rocks around it and keep the sheep safe, relatively dry, and um, and out of the elements to, to some extent. Uh, but you always had to have an opening so the sheep could get in. And so the good shepherds, the one who loved their sheep, they would literally lay their body down in front of that opening so that the sheep could not get out, nor the wild animals get in. And that's just, to me, such a beautiful picture of God's love for us. He is willing to to be that one who gives of himself to protect us so that we can truly have life. When uh, On one of my trips to Israel, we were hiking down Mount Arbel, which is next to the Sea of Galilee. And you could see down below, it's quite the hike down. And you can see down below the, the shepherd that was out in the valley with the sheep, a, a small flock of sheep. And as we came down one of the paths down the side of the mountain, we came to a, a cave that you could, it was fairly deep. And you could see inside there, it looked like there was, uh, there was some hay in there and other things and some bedding rolled up. And our guide said, that's still the cave for the shepherd below. And he pointed out to us that if you'll look, he said, notice how these stones are stacked up on both sides. You can tell they didn't just fall there. They have been placed there. He said, I can, he said, I could, I would be willing to bet you that the distance between this stone and that stone is the height of that shepherd that's down there with those sheep. Still a practice they use today. That when it comes time at night, the shepherd will bring the sheep up, put the sheep inside the cave, and then he'll lay down in that opening. He'll bed down there so that he will protect his sheep. And so Jesus says, I am the sheep gate. I'm the one that's going to pop. I'm going to bring in the opening so that it is only through me. You're going to have to go through me to get in and you're going to have, I mean, I'm going to take care of my sheep. And that's just a powerful image. And, and he also says that as the good shepherd, that I know my sheep and my sheep know me. I know my own and my own know me. Um, there are great illustrations out there of moments where the uh, shepherds will go and they'll stand and they'll talk. And you can see this in Israel even now. Shepherds will be going, coming from one field to another, and they'll all their sheep will mingle on the road while they're talking. And then when they start away, they'll give their call. And when they give their call, the sheep just start dispersing back out. And this shepherd has the sheep that he came with, and that one has the sheep that he came with, because they know their shepherd's voice. And I love that Jesus says that we will know him as he knows us. And of course, we do that through studying scripture and reading these stories and doing these Bible studies. We, we know more and more what Jesus sounds like. Because the reality is, if Jesus is the good shepherd, he's also, you could also figure that he's implying that there are also bad shepherds. You know, one of the interesting things about uh, Scripture is that as it progressed in the New Testament, pastors became known as the shepherds. They were the ones who cared for God's flock, for God's right. people, as as the religious leaders of, of Jesus' day did. And I think we, we don't want to say that there are hired hands and there are bad shepherds, but I think we all have to be careful in our lives to make sure that who we are listening to, who we're following, 
that their voice somehow echoes the voice of the Good Shepherd, mm-hmm. and that we know what the Good Shepherd's voice sounds like through study of Scripture, through understanding uh, Jesus' words and, and Jesus' teachings. And if we hear a shepherd saying something besides that, well, we have to really question, is this a good shepherd or not? Right. And, and is this uh, in the same vein as the good shepherd of Jesus? You know, there have been times in my life, Bill, that I um, I have felt like a sheep lost out in the wilderness and following God as best I could, uh, but not knowing where it was going. And um, I'm sure you've had moments like that, too. Oh, oh yes. I mean, I think we all do. And, and sometimes it is a... Sometimes it's a hindsight kind of moment for us. Looking in the rearview mirror of life, we can see where there are those times when, just like sheep, and I do think it's interesting that we're compared to sheep, um, (laughs) which are not the brightest of animals out there, um, nor are we. They don't solve very many problems by themselves. They really don't. (laughs) And... um, but sometimes, like sheep, we don't really know and really can't pick up on the fact that the shepherd is leading us. But it's only in as we look at the rearview mirror, we see that the shepherd truly was guiding us, taking us from from point A to point B, and and maybe it was a circuitous path that we had to go to through to get there, but he was leading us toward the green pasture. He was leading us beside the still waters, and he was giving us the opportunity to restore our soul, all those images from the 23rd Psalm. He was doing all of that, but sometimes without us really knowing it and not really paying attention to it, because that's the way the good shepherd is. He's He's not beating us with the shepherd's crook, um, his rod and his staff. They aren't. He's not attacking us with that and trying to force us into anything. He is gently leading us and calling us, and we follow, hopefully, and because where he's leading us is somewhere good. And so, maybe we all should take a moment every now and then and and look into that rearview mirror and see. Where has the Good Shepherd led me? And where could the Good Shepherd be leading me even now? Absolutely.